looking forward to moving into the main um, building. Is I love it when when Beatitudes sing, when all of them, you know, sing. Are we together? I love it when all of them sing. Didn't you hear this song? Was I the only one inside this building? It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. God bless you, Beatitudes. So I'm hoping that at least when we move there, the stage will be bigger. They'll be inspired to they'll be inspired to sing together more and more. Hallelujah. Please sing with me. It's not a special number. When I need help, he is me where I go. In the moments when I'm sick, in the moments when I need to live, I he is me where I go. Thank you, Jesus. You hear me where I go. Hallelujah. Father, as we look into your word this morning, please speak to us, O God. Increase us in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding. Let us be edified by your word, O God. Let us be strengthened. Let our faith be revived, O God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me just quickly say that um, with reference to the, the legal week coming up, I think it's, it's more properly described as a legal weekend because it's just a Friday and then the Sunday. And um, particularly this year, we have chosen the theme, wills. Wills. I know that the average Nigerian doesn't want to hear about wills. But I'm telling you, this is 2023. I mean, documents are so important. Unless you are saying you plan to die without leaving anything behind. Is that your hope? No. You want to die and leave nothing, so there will be nothing to share, nothing to discuss. Abby? So we're discussing wills this year so that um, we can better understand how, how wills work, what you need to do, 
and if someone passes, how you can claim what's in the will and all of that. So we'll be having a Friday event and then Sunday event. That means that on Thursday, there will be regular fellowship. Regular fellowship on Thursday. And on Tuesday, there will be regular Bible study. Do we get it? Tuesday, regular Bible study. Thursday, regular fellowship. Then on Friday, we'll have the legal um, event Friday and on Sunday. Praise God. The other thing I want to say is I crave your indulgence. Um, social media has turned our worship services into, into social events. You know, you want to take a picture of somebody when he did like this. You want to take a picture when he's like this. It's a worship service. Hallelujah. So much as it is good to take pictures, to document what we are doing for future, to remember, ah, I remember when we were in that building and so on, that's fine. But we should try and keep it at a bare minimum. Taking of pictures during service, if we can keep it at a bare minimum, it will help us. Let's not forget why we are here. We are here to worship God. Whether somebody sees how we sing or not, whether we post how we pray, or not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we worship God in spirit and in truth. So let's take pictures, but please let's keep it at a bare minimum. Hallelujah. Amen. Our reading is taken from the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 16 to 18. 2 Timothy 4. From verse 16 to verse 18. Are we there? Are we there? If you are there, please say amen. amen. Okay. Verse 16 says, At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. 17. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me. And that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work. And preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So this year our theme has been occupied till I come. And somehow, we may think that occupying till he comes is something you sit in your house and do. You don't need a job. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to go to the market. All you need to do is find a place in your house and sit down and wait until Jesus comes. Abby? As much as we are occupying, we have no option but to interact with this world. You wake up in the morning and go out to look for what you will eat, to look for how to get ahead in life. Occupying till he comes is not a static activity. You don't stay in one place while waiting for him to come. And as we go out into the world to interact with it, we find that there are many, many challenges in our path. I don't know if this has been your experience. It has been mine. Hallelujah. All sorts of things go wrong. All sorts of things happen to us, and we get discouraged and downcast. And the journey becomes even more difficult as we see all kinds of things happening around us. This morning, I'd like to encourage us from God's word that you are not on a journey by yourself. God is with you. As you walk through life with all the challenges, with all the complications, with all the difficulties, I want you to know that God is right there with you. Hallelujah. When you read the scripture that we just read, from the outset you can see the contrast in the apostle's confession or his attitude. Because on one hand, he says he's sad that nobody stood with him. And then on the other hand, he says he's grateful that God was with him. And I think this is our experience for most of us in life. At some point, you feel that you are all by yourself. There is no help, too much trouble, 
at other points, you feel that God is with you. And this is exactly what he, he, he was expressing. The Apostle Paul is in custody in Rome when he wrote this. And as far as we know, he was never released from you know, that, that prison where he wrote this, as far as we know. This is the end of his very last letter, to the best of our knowledge. And it is, it is instructive for us in the kind of contrasts that we face, that we live through in life. Hallelujah. So the text points out two important areas where we often go through times of testing and trouble and tribulation. And then it points us to where we find relief, restoration, rejuvenation. Hallelujah. The text starts from the natural position where we begin with all the trouble, the trial, the tribulation, and then points us to where we can find relief, be rejuvenated, and be restored. First of all, he says, no one came to stand by me. No one came to stand by me. I find it amazing. This is a man who is well advanced in age. His ministry has touched so many people. He has gone to so many countries to preach the word to encourage the brethren. And then at this critical moment, when he's facing this trial, he says, no one stood with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we imagine how sad he must have been? In a foreign land, with nobody that he knows. Call your, call your brother or your sister who has jackpot. And ask them, one of the biggest problems they have is that they are not seeing people they know. Hallelujah. When you see Nigerians abroad, whether they are, well, there are some places that are saturated with Nigerians. But when you go to areas where you don't have many people, even if you are Igala, if you see somebody that is Edo, is your brother. You'll be excited to see him because you can identify, you can relate. You will find your common points. But here was the apostle in a foreign land, an old man, tired, and no one stood with him. Hallelujah. This was a man of God. He had served God, and no one stood with him. Where were his family? Where were his friends? Where were the people he had ministered to? Man of God, man of God, where were they? Hallelujah. He says no one stood with him. Many of us face such circumstances. Somebody will say, my wife died in the hospital because no one stood with us. We needed money. Just 20,000 for her medication, we didn't have it. Say, ah, if only I went to school, I wouldn't be where I am today. But at the time I got that admission, no one stood with me. I spoke to my uncles, I spoke to everyone, but no one stood with me. When I applied for that job, of course I didn't get it. Because no one stood with me. Hallelujah. It is a popular cry. It is a popular sad testimony to hear that no one stood with me. The question I want to ask you is, is it true that no one stands with you? In your time of trouble, in your time of difficulty, in your time of testing, is it really true that no one stood with you or that no one stands with you. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So I ask you, did God forsake him? I'm asking you, interactive, it's a class. <laughs> did God forsake him? There's no point of Christ's life being an existence that God forsook him. 
but he was speaking out of the heaviness of his heart. He was speaking out of the pain that he was going through. Because in fact, when no one stands with us, we can be sure that God stands with us. Hallelujah. You see, when we say that no one stands with us, it is a statement or a testimony about our faith in God. Now, because we are family, because we are friends, it is natural to expect your family and your friends to be there for you when you are going through something. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly normal. Are we together? But you see, ultimately, we must be able to say that my help is in the name of the Lord. That even if no human being stands with me, ultimately, my help is in the name of the Lord. Because if the friends and family that do not stand by you, if they now become your enemies, bro, good morning. Which good morning? When I was going through Allah, where were you? Said, good morning, you know. Then you're keeping malice. You don't want to see them anymore. Please don't talk to me again. You have made that person your help. Hallelujah. If you become discouraged and give up in life because someone didn't help you. My uncle was a minister, imagine, and I'm still here. I didn't get a job. In fact, that my uncle, he's such an evil man. Do you know, I have one uncle like this. That man is so wicked. He's my mother's you know, brother, but the whole time, he never... Leave your uncle alone. Your uncle is not your helper. Let him be. He will give a stewardship to God of what he did with the opportunities he got. But for you, it is for you to put your hope, your faith, your trust in God. And whatever means of grace God chooses, it is his choice. That uncle you are looking at may not be the source by which God intends to bless you. Why don't you let him go? That auntie may not be the person God is going to use to uplift you. Why don't you let them go? When we carry people around in our hearts because they didn't help us, then we are saying we don't have a God that helps us. It is those people that are our God. And since our God has failed us, we are angry with our God. Hallelujah. God forbid that any human being will be our source. God forbid that any human being will be our hope. God forbid that everything we have, our trust, our faith, will be in any human being, no matter how highly placed. Because every human being is merely a means of grace. If God likes, he can send birds to bring food and give you where you are to eat. Hallelujah. If he likes, he can raise stones to sing and clap. That is the God we serve. That is the God we trust. Some may trust in horses. Others trust in chariots. But we'll trust in our God. Hallelujah. And so being disappointed as he was, by the fact that no one stood with him, by the fact that no one came to him to help him, he turned his attention to where our real help comes from. He turns to the one whose testimony concerning himself is that he is faithful and true, even the God who remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. And God, knowing that one day we will need this encouragement, caused the apostle to write these words, but the Lord stood with me. Hallelujah. I want you to say to yourself, but the Lord stood with me. Say it with conviction, but the Lord stood with me. Say, but the Lord stands with me. Hallelujah. Because God is faithful. He is the beginning and the end. And he is the journey. Praise God. I want you to take courage by standing on the promises of God because he says, Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Let these words resonate in our hearts. Let them encourage us. Let them strengthen, strengthen us. The God that cannot fail has said that he is with you even unto the end of the age. Hallelujah. I love that hymn. It says, standing on the promises that cannot fail, 
when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Let's not sing hymns because it's time for him. Stand up, then we'll sing. Then the keyboard, ah, I heard that he didn't sing it well. No. When you sing, let what you are singing minister to you. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Hallelujah. Why am I so confident that I shall prevail? Is it because I'm strong? Is it because I'm good? Is it because I'm powerful? I am being held by a God who cannot fail. By a God who is faithful regardless of my state or my situation. Standing on the promises of God, by his living word, we shall prevail. And then in verse 18, the apostle shows us that his faith and his salvation were threatened. Are we together? His faith and his salvation were threatened. I want you to understand that when we pass through things in life, situations, circumstances, what is really at stake ultimately is what? Your faith and your salvation. Hallelujah. When he saw sold his birthright, he said, ah, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, give me something to eat. And his crafty brother said, I should give you something to eat. He said, yeah, give me your birthright. Abby, you want to eat? I have food. Give me your birthright. And that one said, what? What is birth? What am I using it for? Birthright. For Take battery. Give me pepper soup. <laughs> Hallelujah. And many of us are finding ourselves in such situations today. When you are faced with a circumstance, you have a need of money, and they give you something to sign. And you do like this and sign. What you are saying is, what is birthright? Give me what to eat. Hallelujah. When we have relationships that are ungodly, you are living with someone that is not your husband or your wife, but they are feeding you. They are paying your fees. What you are saying is, what is birthright? Give me food. But Jesus says to us, speaking to Satan in, in the temptation, he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Because when you compromise your faith, when you keep the fact that you are God's child aside in order to achieve something, what you are simply doing is that you are worshipping that thing. That thing is more important to you than the fact of your salvation. What shall separate us from the love of God? Famine, hardship, difficulty, lack. We are convinced that nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I remind us again that when you are faced with difficult circumstances, always remember that it is your faith, your salvation, your hope in God that is being threatened. I tell you something. If giving you a lot of money will make you stop worshipping God, Satan is happy for you to have a lot of money. If being broke will make you stop worshipping God, Satan is happy for you to be broke. You see, Satan is not interested in you either way. Whether you are rich or you are poor is nothing to him. The critical issue there is to ensure that your faith is derailed. So however it will be achieved, fine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, many people cannot see God because they are so proud of how well they are doing. When I was in university, somebody told me, that ever since I got born again, I have never sinned even once. And I just nodded like this. And in my heart, I said, you have just sinned your first sin by lying. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are so proud of what you have done. Guess what? Satan is happy that you are proud of your works. Because righteousness is not by your works. It is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
All our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. So as soon as you are trusting in something other than the finished work of Christ on Calvary, then you are exactly where the devil wants you. So we must be careful and trust God that our situations and circumstances do not lead us to shipwreck our faith. The apostle likens this to an attack by a lion. He says, that's verse 17. He says, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Hallelujah. The Bible says that your adversary, the devil, is going about how? Like a lion looking for who to devour. And the apostle says that he was delivered out of the mouth of the lion because the situation and the circumstance that he faced did not lead him to abandon his faith. It did not lead him to shipwreck his faith. But he trusted even more in God in spite of the fact that no one stood by him. He was strengthened and encouraged by the fact that the Lord stood with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to encourage you. The hymn writer says, He all my griefs has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he is my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me so, through Jesus I shall safely reach the shore. It is God that has begun a good thing in you. And he will surely see it to its conclusion. You will not fall by the side. You will endure to the end. For it is written that he that endures to the end will wear the crown of life. Hallelujah. Do not be moved by the challenges and difficulties and complications. Because God stands by you. Hallelujah. It is not in your power. He didn't say, no one stood by me, but I just made myself to be strong. He said, the Lord strengthened me. I encourage us this morning, receive the strength, the encouragement, the empowerment of God to keep walking in spite of whatever you may find in your way. Perhaps you are here or you are listening by some other medium and your strength is failing. Your heart is troubled. The testing has taken so long. The trial has taken so long. And you are losing strength. Nobody's there to help you. No family member. Even the church, they just see you. You come and sit down, you smile. They don't know what's going on in you. I encourage you this morning. There is victory at the end of this battle. There is light at the end of this tunnel. There is rest and relief at the end of this journey. I speak to you by the authority of the word of God when I say this. I do not speak to you of myself, but as we saw in that hymn, by the living word of God, you shall prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have any lawyers in the house? You know the difference between shall and will. When you say shall, it's not either or. Definite. Hallelujah. And I say to you, we shall prevail because we stand on the promises of God who cannot but be faithful. He cannot deny himself, so he remains faithful. I encourage you, no matter how difficult, no matter how complicated, I want you to take the first step this morning by saying to yourself, the Lord stands with me. The Lord stands with me. The Lord stands with me. Please pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. The Lord stands with me. There is no situation or circumstance that is beyond the walking of God in and through me. And so by his living word, I shall prevail. He is God that supplies our needs 
according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. He says, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord stands with you. And he knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He hears me when I call. Oh, He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Thank you for your word of encouragement. That no matter how difficult it is, no matter how dark it is, no matter how we are surrounded by evil, that our strength coming from you. And Father, we ask of you, O oh God, this day, because we know this is the experience of many, especially in times like this. That your children are being treated. Your children are suffering. But our Lord, according to your word, you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, we are praying, even as Paul encouraged himself in you, that you stood by him. Lord, this day we reaffirm our position in you. We will not look back. We will not look back. We will never go back. In the name of Jesus, our hands are in the plow. Our hands are in your hands, Lord. Lord, the strength that we need to run this race with every perseverance, give it unto us. We remain resolute in the name of Jesus. For as many that have good courage, Father, encourage their heart. Let there be a release of your grace from heaven upon their lives. Thank you, Father. We are praying, O oh God, that, Lord, we will not be casualties, but that all of us will make it at the end of the day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A few things about Ekwa Asokoro. We're a church that desires to continually study God's word, continually grow in fellowship with one another, continually grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then ultimately be instruments in God's hand to reach out to the people who are around us. We will be happy if you're in Abuja at any time to visit us at Linda Choka Crescent, plot 2904, Asokoro. We'll be wonderfully glad to have you join us, have fellowship with us. Scrolling on your, under your screen are all our social media handles and you can join us on any of them. On Telegram, you get the audio version of all our sermons. So you can join us there. All our social media handles use the same name, Ekwa Asokoro. So just check them out and join us. It will be wonderful if you keep this fellowship of being with us from time to time. On Tuesdays, we get to meet this Bible study. Join us also on Tuesdays and you will have a wonderful time. Thank you again for joining us and God bless you.